Hi everyone, Brad here. Back again today, and, and I want to talk about some RV technology things that we use from websites to apps to pick a thing that we use to get where we're going and plan what we're going to do when we get there. I would also like to talk about some things we use for shopping. Everybody uses Amazon, but we'll talk about that and a few other websites that we use to shop for things that we need while we're traveling, uh, how we get mail when we travel around so much. And I want to talk about some technology in the rig and in the truck. So some things that we use to get us where we're going and how we navigate. I'm also going to do a giveaway in this video. So if you're interested in learning how to win something for free, stay tuned. If you don't know already, there's a QR code down in the bottom of the screen. If you scan that QR code, it's going to take you to our link tree. And it's just a link, a list of links that gets you to things that we use and, and love. Most everything I'm going to talk about today will have a link on there. And if not, you can probably find it on our website. And if I'm missing something, please let me know and I'll fix it. All right, let's get started. I have my computer open here and I'm going to show you starting okay, RV. RV Life app. Some folks introduced me to this website. They know the person who started this whole thing. Uh, I got access to it and I'm very grateful for it because it is really superb. And if and trip planning and all those type things. So let's walk through this real quick. So you can log in and I'm going to take you to the trip wizard, which is already open here. You see on my screen recording here, I'm going to create a trip and I want to leave on, let's just say Monday the 11th. We're going to call it adventure number one. Do you know what day you're leaving? Yes. Or I can leave it no and just save the trip. So let's create the trip. I'm going to use my current location. Over here on the left hand side, I can make any notes that I want to make specifically about where I might be going. And the trip is active. The pre-departure email that will send you an email with all of your plans and whatnot on it. And then you set up some of the gear here. So I can look up RV Invo or I can put it in here manually. So my trailer is 9 feet 9 inches tall, 28 feet, 27 feet 11 inches. Uh, it weighs gross weight, 7,600 pounds, and I'm carrying propane. My uh, here is my truck information. Fuel economy when I'm towing on average is about here in Florida on flat land going through the Keys specifically it was like 15 miles a gallon but typically I get about 12 miles a gallon on up and down terrain. And then you can set up fuel warnings that will give you uh, based on your miles per gallon and how far you're traveling. Next I can specifically say I want to avoid tolls, highways, ferries, all those things like that. If that's not something I want to drive through or I have a rig that can't go down those uh, roads or and ferries and things like that. And then I can put in some estimates here, how far I want to drive, that kind of thing like that. Now, expenses. If I know how much it's going to cost me per day to camp, I can type that stuff in here meals per day, miscellaneous expenses, I can give a very good estimate of what my trip might cost, which is a very handy thing if you are very budget conscious. So I save and finish that. So on my trip, I want to add a location and I want to go to Tallahassee. Just Tallahassee, Florida. I don't know where yet. We'll add to the trip. I'm going to stay there for two nights. I can add this after the last stop or if I've had multiple stops, we'll see what that looks like in a moment. And then from Tallahassee, I want to go to Pensacola. Let's go Fort Pickens Campground. We were there before. So I'll add that to the trip and that'll be after the last stop. Add to the trip. And then I want to go to Baton Rouge. If I know where I want to stay, the KOA there, maybe. Add the trip. After one, one night, add the trip. And then I'm going to do a round trip. I want to go directly back to my starting point from my ending point. So now I can see what my route would look like, and I have a host, a host of other things in here that I want to do. Now, while I'm in Tallahassee, I can go back in here and I can say it's going to cost me, I'm just making up numbers here, it's going to cost me $75 tonight. I'm going to eat 
I'm going to budget for $100 for the meals, uh, $100 for miscellaneous, don't know fuel costs yet. I can put in my reservation information here. Cost per gallon, uh, $3.97. Then I can go through here for Pickens. It's, um, I don't remember what it was a night, but you can go through there and add that kind of stuff too. So now I have a trip in here with a direct route back home. If I want to change my route coming back, all I have to do is drag route and I can grab it here and drag it over to another road if I want to. And it will reroute me to there. Uh, so I can do all this stuff on my computer. And this is pre-planning or if somebody wants to do it driving down the road and sitting in the passenger seat, that might be fine too. But pre-planning, I can sit here. A couple of other neat things on here are custom stop. And then it's gonna give me fuel warnings. Like, hey, based on the information you put in here, you're gonna be out of gas right here. So made it better start looking for gas. And, and then I have other options to see what might be along my route, like places to stay or if I need just other info, there's all kinds of information in this app that you can really, really use. And you can change the map style. So you can have a satellite view of what the map looks like, which is sometimes handy because you can zoom in and see what you know the overview of the campground looks like. Or if you're gonna pull off right here at this interstate, you can see what kind of parking lots are, things like that. So depending on how you like your map view, I can turn on and off the uh, campsites I can filter the park types. So let's go, I just want us to look at state parks and national parks. Points of interest. I can have, I can add fuel, Camping World, Walmarts, etc. And I can notify myself of low clearance. Now from there I have plenty of information on my map or whatever I choose to have on my map. I can select only high rated parks, close that, close that, and I can see my big screen here of where we're gonna go and where we might be stopping and what we might be looking at while we're there. Before we get going on the phone option, I wanna quickly show you some other things you can do in the, in the computer. And you can do these similar things on the phone app too, but email my itinerary, I can copy this trip, I can print directions, I can export it to my Excel sheet, uh, calendar, GPS, whatever else. There's so many other options on here that some people really, really use and find helpful. Uh, I like planning a trip on here just so I can see it over you where we're going to go and where we might stop along the way. Blair does not use this. She uses other things, and I'll get into some of those in a moment. But now let's look at the phone app real quick. But I'm going to go to my trips. I can have Adventure 1 show up. And then I have all the data in here from that trip that I created online in my phone. I can download this map. I can uh, adjust things on here. I can also have a map on, on the screen here that I can filter and look at different things like that along the way, just like I can on the computer and home. But what I like about being able to download the map, so if you're traveling to somewhere where there's not really a good cell phone coverage maybe, or you just want to have something uh, concrete so you can always look at it no matter where you are if you have service or not you can download the app on your phone or ipad or things like that and use it as you travel but it has a wonderful nice little app so i'm grateful for the rv life app i'm grateful for the rv life website there are so many tutorials and so many videos you can watch on there about all sorts of fun things so it's something you might want to check out as if that's of interest to you on my computer screen you can see all stays there's a number of variants of it so camping military campgrounds rest areas whatever else um, it's a wonderful app i have it on my phone here as well uh, blair uses this one and i use this one too as we're zooming down the highway because it's just an easy quick quick app uh, to open up and use on the phone i like to just military campgrounds and national parks and then it shows me all the military campgrounds and, and all the national parks on the screen. And I'm able to do all sorts of filtering. Like if you have a specific 
height of your rig. You can't go under these bridges. You can look for low clearance things on here. You can look up rest areas on here. Uh, you can look up specific names of towns and cities and RV parks and all those things like that. But if you want to pick an independent campground, for example, I'm going to show you here. I can click on the independent campground. It gives me how far away it is, and then it gives me some information about said campground. And to be able to call, add it to Google Maps, add it to Apple Maps, and it gives me some information about the campground too. So dollar signs, how much it costs, uh, what they can camp and fit inside that campground, things like that. So pretty handy app here, All Stays RV, Camp and RV. So that's one that uh, Blair uses the most. Uh, I like to use the RV Life app the most. Moving on, Camp Watch. Camp Watch, you know, I emailed the guy who started this website some years ago, and I really think Camp Watch is one of the best things going out there. If you're into tent camping or you're into, um, you know, state national parks, because some of those websites are confusing to try to figure out something, but this guy is taking all the information from the national park websites to state campgrounds to RV parks and things like that, and he's put it into one uh, usable interface, and it's a fantastic option. And I'm going to show you real quick what I what I mean. If you've tried to navigate some of these state websites, F Florida's very good, but some of these other ones are not. Looking here in the state of Florida, I'm just going to go over here to Alexander Springs just to give you an example of what Camp Watch can do for you because it's pretty great. So if I wanted to stay in this campground, you know, coming up next month on the 17th, it's going to take me to recreation.gov and I can build a spot, but I saw the dates that were available. But if I want to stay like Buck Lake Campground, for example, I don't have availability on the 11th and 12th and 13th, but I am able to add an alert and I want to stay there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I can pick the dates. So start dates, end dates, 11th through the 15th, and I can pick pick um, one site per night. Anyway, then I can go ahead and create an alert here and that will alert me if anything comes open on those dates. So really, really handy uh, option there. But these are for all sorts of campgrounds, uh, specifically state, national park, campgrounds, things like that. I encourage you to check it out if you're not done so already. Moving on here, Harvest Host. If you don't know, Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome, those two websites merged together to become one uh, some time back. Blair and I have been members of Harvest Host since, well, now three years. January of 2021 is when we became members. But uh, right now, I have access to 10,352 different locations around the country that I can stay at for free uh, with the with it being known that you're going to you know buy something at the farmer's market, play around the golf, uh, you know, patron the business, basically what you're going to do, but you pay access, you pay for an access to the website and then it's a wonderful, wonderful option. We have stayed in some of the most amazing places around the country, uh, for free and, you know, met some amazing folks, got to tour some amazing places and things like that. So we are huge fans of Boondockers Welcome and Harvest Host. And if you are not yet a member, I, I encourage you highly to sign up. TripAdvisor. If, Everybody's, I'm sure, has been on TripAdvisor if you travel around the country. You know, we just type in the where we're going to go, click on things to do, and it'll give you a laundry list of whatever things to do in the state or in the location that you might be traveling in. But it's part of the way, that, you know, we kind of decide on what we might want to see when we're there or do when we're there, or maybe restaurants to eat at while we're there. But it's just a handy thing to, you know, uh, crowdsourcing to get information, if you will. Another thing is we use our National Park Passport book. So it has wonderful maps and wonderful options and you know, a little bit of list about every national park, national monument, national historic site, etc. Blair are on a quest to see all the national parks in the country. And we have done, I don't know, over 50 of the 66 now, I think, major national parks. And I can't tell you how many national historic sites and things like that we've been to, but so many and we're, we're trying to finish that off. So that's part of our travels this year. So those are apps and websites that we use for planning. Now, on the phone here, I have a couple of different ones that I'm going to show you that we have access to. So in my uh, data here, I have a Harvest Host app. Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome. 
and I can pick, you know, shows me where I am. Same thing as the website showed. A couple of others I have on here. Nomad Near Me is a, is a cool thing that I've used and, you know, found some connections on there. And you can see all the states we've traveled to. But there's friends, if other, other members on there who are near you, uh, you may want to check out. Road Trippers is another one that you can plan and find some unique things along the way. And what I really like about Road Trippers is if you are traveling along the highway, you can say, find me all the weird things that are, you know, six miles off the highway or one mile off the highway and things like that. And it's, it's a cool little option, uh, Road Trippers. Let's get into some shopping and things of that nature. I love Air Gear. Uh, Rich and Cheryl, who run the website and run the run the business, uh, they're wonderful folks, and I've known them for a number of years, and I've I've done some work for them, make making videos and things. So if you ever go to the website, you might see my face on there telling you how to do a thing or use the thing. But I love their products. They are curated for specifically for Airstream, but many many other things out there work on any RV. So. Uh, they have branched out. So if you're looking for some wonderful options and upgrades for your rig, start with Air Gear, and you can't go wrong. Amazon, obviously, everybody knows about Amazon. We have an Amazon page, uh, curated Amazon page here that you can see, and it's specifically like all the things traveling with pets, Airstream and RV water, sewer, Airstream essentials, so on and so forth. If you watch our latest video, uh, spare parts and things that I carry. I have just a list of everything from that video, cleaning, whatever else. But it's all uh, Amazon.com slash shop slash 13 adventures and it'll take you right to this page. Understand that we do make a commission if you purchase anything from clicking on those links, but I don't sell anything on, on uh, Amazon from us. But I will tell you that everything on that page or everything on that list or everything in there, I've either made a video about on there you can find, or it's something we currently or have used in the past. Maybe they worked in another rig, but they don't work here. Maybe they work better here than the other rig, but everything on there is something that I know and approve of and use. It's not just junk. So please know that. And if you find something on there that is junk or a link that doesn't work anymore, please let me know and I will correct it. Uh, Thrive Market, same thing. If we can't get quality food products wherever we might be located, we can have Thrive Market mail it to us and it'll show up right in our box, which is cool. And there's some significant discounts on there, but you got to be a member of the website. Uh, it's whatever the numbers are per year. I don't remember now, but I've saved some significant money because things are much cheaper on this website than they are in most grocery stores. Element, I've talked about Element many, many times over. It's an electrolyte replenishment drink. And it's good for anyone who sweats, which we all do. So uh, if you want to know, if you need some electrolyte balance in your life, check out Element. It's uh, no dodgy ingredients and made from the best stuff. And the company and all the folks surrounding the company are some of the most amazing people I've ever known. Similarly with Keto Crisp, Adam and the Can Do team right here, uh, I'm so impressed with them and what they do and the product. This is something we love to take hiking, biking, camping, uh, backpacking, snowboarding, skiing, and things like that. It's our adventure food because it packs easily. It's good for you, and um, it fits the keto brand lifestyle, ketogenic lifestyle, should you choose to eat that way. One other thing we use is AG1. I've talked about this in a video before. I have no affiliation with them other than it's something we use. I do appreciate that it takes the guesswork out of vitamins and minerals uh, daily. We just have a scoop in the mornings both of us and then go about our day. So if we don't have the proper nutrients from food or we don't eat properly that day or something like that, I don't have to worry about my nutrients. You can take this quiz online and it's a, you know, help you find out if it's the right fit for you. So uh, there's a link down below if you're interested in checking out AG1. Escapees RV Club is something we love and know and use. Uh, this is how we do our mail. So all of our mail goes to a central location and it gets distributed to us wherever we might be at that point. Lucky Dog here, uh, proud to be a partner with these guys. They have all sorts of great things for your furry friends. Uh, kennels, dog bowls, poop bags, kennel covers, uh, cots that your pup can lay on out of the hot, off the hot pavement or off the hot sand and such like that. So all sorts of great stuff here. All right, the next website is The Healthy Rebellion. So Rob Wolf and his wife Nikki started this website a few years back in order to free a million people from the sick care system. I really love that goal. And it's become a thriving online community for all things health. 
uh, fitness, nutrition. They have programs every month, calendar of events, and typically they do a call a rebel reset uh, every every quarter or so to do a seven day carb test and find out what you need to be eating in your life. And it's all community based, and you get uh, answers to all your questions about things. The strength component in here, Sarah and Grace and Strange often put on classes on there uh, from their gym in New York, Basis Gym, and I'm a huge fan. I, I've, I've known Rob for a long time, and I really love this community, and it's great to be in a place where everyone's trying to better themselves and better those around them, and you can find book clubs and just a, a variety of groups to find maybe your niche and check out the link in the video description down below to get started with them today. Calculator, uh, weight calculator, etc. This is a website uh, this guy created. If you've watched Keep Your Daydream, Mark and Trish for a long time, uh, he had a bunch of spreadsheets and this is based on that uh, spreadsheet. So it's a handy place. It's on our link tree. If you again, scan that QR code down there, you can scroll down and find the weight calculator for your vehicle and RV. I've gone in here and put in all of my data for my truck and my RV. So you can kind of see what it looks like. So my truck is about 6,900 and some odd pounds. So 7,000 a gross vehicle weight rating of my truck is 11.4. Gross combined GCV weight rating, so gross combined vehicle weight rating is 19,000 pounds, and that's the weight of my truck at its gross and my trailer at its gross. I can have 7,600 pounds of payload, and my towing capacity on a bumper pull is 13.6. I can tow a way heavier fifth wheel. Uh, passenger weight, so me and Blair and Piper and Scout are about 400 pounds. Cargo weight, all the stuff in the back of my truck is about 500 pounds. Not that much. I'm just I'm over guessing. And then my unloaded vehicle weight rating of my tow is 6,000 pounds. So this trailer empty is 6,000. Gross is 7,600 because it has a 1,600 carrying capacity and it has an 850 pound hitch weight. So you can see down here, hitched, all the things are in the green. Some of the people I see going down the highway are very, 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 very close, if not overextended of their vehicle's capacity to tow something. And you see them often. Their headlights are pointed at the moon. The truck and trailer look like this. And it's just way heavy, way, way heavy for what they're towing. And it's very scary. So my rule is this. The gross vehicle weight rating of my towing towable, so my trailer, whatever I'm towing, should never exceed 80% of the capacity of my truck. And I'm going to make basic numbers here. So if my truck can tow 10,000 pounds, the most my trailer will ever weigh is up to 8,000 pounds, 80%. That's less wear and tear on the tow vehicle, the brakes, the gas, mileage, all the things like that. So that's my rule. But anyway, put in all your data for this, and it, it will help you understand what you're doing. And... Um, make you safer on the road. Another app and fun thing we use here is the MicroAir Easy Touch. I have an app for the phone. You can see it on the screen there, but that thing is fantastic. I can go in my bedroom right now and touch on the screen. I can use the app to, to manipulate my air conditioner or my heater or my fans or things like that in the rig, and it's awesome. And I made a whole video about installing it. Um, uh, wonderful, wonderful device here. Huge fans of that. That's another technology we use in the rig. If I'm laying in bed at night and I get warm, I can hook it up. Level Mate Pro app is awesome. You can use it on your watch, on the app. There's a new version of it coming out uh, in a month or so. I haven't never tested it. I don't know anything about it other than it's a new one coming out with a longer battery life, I believe, and easier to change battery. T-Mobile Home Internet. So this is the box, and it's home internet. That's how we do our internet as we travel. Now, it's tied to an address, so you have to go through there and find the address that works. And you're not supposed to go outside of that address because it's supposed to be tied to a specific tower. But I will tell you, Blair and I have traveled from Seattle to San Diego, to the Key West, to, to Maine, and all points between. 
Uh, we've hit the four corners of the U.S., the Continental 48, and all points in between, and it's worked everywhere, and it's worked great. Verizon has a very similar thing, and it is tied to an address and a geofence. So if you go outside of that fenced-in area, the, the Verizon will not work, to my understanding. Starlink. I'm going to talk about Starlink real quick. I love Starlink. I think it's a wonderful option. I think so many people have it. And again, I think it's absolutely fantastic and works no matter where you, you know, where you are kind of thing. And you get blazing speeds from it. But if you're in the East Coast, oftentimes you're under trees and you've got to find a spot to get that thing to see the sky. Not always easy, but it's a thing. Out West, not so much a problem because there's not as many trees out that way. Uh, throughout the West. It's also very expensive. It's 500 and some odd dollars just for the equipment and then 125 to 150 bucks a month depending on how you're going to use it. And it's a very simple thing to install in your trailer. There's a smart plug that you can hook up on the side with a data port uh, that you can really easily do and, and transition your rig to. Um, I may make a video about how I would install it in my rig at some point but again we think it's fantastic but that thing works much much easier. We also have tethering data on our phones and our iPads, should we need to use that. So we have Verizon service on our phones and iPads, and that's a T-Mobile service. If you are a T-Mobile member already, that's cheaper per month. Uh, but it's worked everywhere for us, so I've been very, very happy with T-Mobile. Another app that I love to use is the Victron app, the Victron Smart Shunt, the Victron Servo GX, and all the other things that I have attached to that. Now, if you have uh, the solar package from Airstream factory, you're going to have an MPPT controller on your wall over by the kitchen, typically near the light switches in your C-level ga gauge. That MPPT controller is not Bluetooth, the one that comes from the factory. You can order an upgrade for it and easily change it out for one that is Bluetooth, and you can use the same app for yours. But know that the one from the factory is not Bluetooth. At least 2023 and older was not. 2024 newer might be, but not that I'm aware of. On my computer screen, you can see everything that's happening in my rig right now. And this is coming to me via my T-Mobile home internet through the Serbo GX out to the internet and back to my computer. But it mirrors what's on the screen in my bedroom. Also, that same information is right here. And I can view the online portal, which is what I'm looking at on my computer. Or I can go to my smart shunt. Now, this is one of the things, I've talked about this already before in a video, but if you don't have, the easy thing you can do to add to your trailer is a battery shunt. And it will tell you exactly what's going on. And you can, it's a great way to do a power audit and figure out what happens in your trailer, wherever you might be. So I'm a huge fan of this for boondocking specifically and figuring out what's going on in your rig. Check out a smart shunt. I think they're like 150 bucks. They're easy. They're pretty easy to add. You add it to the negative cable coming into your rig. You need to splice the wire, put two ends on it, put it together. Very, very simple to add into. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not. Kindle, I like to read on my Kindle because it looks like I'm reading on a book and I, you know, it's backlit at night, so it's not super bright and it's not like a normal phone screen, things like that. Uh, but I don't have to keep books around. I have hundreds and hundreds of books on there that I've read and I take it with me backpacking and camping because it's lightweight and the battery lasts for a long time. So I'm a huge fan of the Kindle reading on a Kindle. And now let's talk about your uh, backup camera. You know, it's, it's kind of a backup camera. Yes, it is, but it's also a driving down a highway camera uh, to see when you pass cars and you can change lanes and things like that. But the one that comes on your rig, Voyager, typically if you have a newer model, the screen may be different, but the Voyager camera is something that Airstream has been installing for a while. If you go to the Voyager website, they have a number of options you can buy. So if you have a 33-foot Classic, for example, and you have an extra long vehicle with a super long bed, sometimes the Bluetooth antenna signal gets mixed up in there. So you can add an antenna, you can add a uh, repeater and things like that that may be helpful to you. One other option that you may want to consider is adding a driving camera. So in my tow vehicle, I have a camera that points out the front windshield and there's a wire ran all the way to the back glass and it points out the back window too for when we're driving down the highway. I have seen people do that exact same thing in their Airstream and they hook it directly to the battery. So back here in this back window, they have the rear facing camera and up at the front, facing out the front, they have the front camera. And it would run on battery and just continuously loop record over that uh, over the life of the SIM card, not SIM card, but a little data card that's in there. It would just record loops on there and you'd have all your data 
should you ever have an issue. And it's a security feature as well, so if you're parking your rig somewhere and you want the uh, video recorded, I know it's just going to drain your battery. We have a small camera that we put in the trailer when we're traveling, or when we're parked in RV park and we're hooked up to Wi-Fi and all the things like that. We can put a camera in here and we can look and see what the animals are doing while we're out. I can control the air condition as long as I have internet while I'm out. I can monitor the temperature inside the rig while I'm out using that micro air easy touch. Again, I have to have internet to do that. I have a tire monitor, tire pressure monitoring system, TPMS. I have one sensor on all four tires on the trailer on the ground. I have one sensor on the spare tire of the trailer and another six sensor on my spare tire of my tow vehicle. So I always know the temperature and the pressure of those tires and it's a really handy option and it comes with a little bit of screen. There are a number of those uh, systems you can hook up and get a Bluetooth on your phone and you show the tire pressure on there, which is handy. I've just never used that version, so I don't, I can't speak to that, but the one I do have, I've made videos about it. Uh, we've carried that same tire pressure monitor system for all i've had on all five trailers that i've had over the last 12 years in my truck i have the bullet point mounting solution so that's where my phone goes i have a gopro that points out the front windshield so we're traveling through somewhere cool i can get a time lapse of that and the voyager camera that goes with the backup camera on this trailer so that big screen the big seven inch screen goes right there on my dash just mounted looks pretty good. It's pretty handy. One other thing that you may want to consider if you're towing somewhere by yourself and you need um, another set of eyes somewhere, if you have a GoPro, a GoPro is typically a Bluetooth option and you can set a GoPro up in the campsite and then you can Bluetooth this to your to your phone through the GoPro app and you can watch the video feed of what you're doing. For example, if I'm trying to back up onto my little leveling block or something like that i can set the camera out there uh pointing at that and i can watch it as i back up and it will tell me i can see real time what i'm backing up to on the on the wheel itself uh, trying to back up onto that thing using the camera the, the distance is not always very far and the signal can get lost so you got to be mindful of the locations you're using it and how far away you're trying to set the camera up. but if you have a gopro it may be an option for you to use if you're towing somewhere by yourself and you need to be able to see something while you're still doing something. On our trip to this campground today, I realized I forgot to talk about two things. One is TSD Open Roads, and it, it's this card right here. It's a diesel card, and there's an app associated with it, and I'll show you that too. But there are a number of um, gas stations you can get gas from, and you can see them all here. I have no affiliation with them other than I use them. And I only, I use them on occasion. And I've talked about them in a, in a previous video, but it's a wonderful option if you can't get into a Costco or you can't get into a Walmart. So um, that's one more thing I'm gonna talk about today is gas, uh, Walmart gas specifically. So we have the Costco Visa card and you get 4% cash back using the Costco Visa card. So typically anywhere we shop, if I can get a gas at Costco or get gas, Somewhere else, I try to get the 4% cash back. But sometimes the the T, the open roads gets you a significant, significantly more discount than, than any other discounted fuel program would be. For example, we were in, uh, when, we came, when we came back from Key West, we were somewhere near Naples, Florida, and there was a, a Love's truck stop and it was advertised at like 420 and I got it for 380 and the Walmart down the road was 402 and I can get 10 cents off a gallon at Walmart so it would have been 392 so it was cheaper for me to go to the Love's truck stop and use this card now using that card it has to draw from a bank account it does not do a credit card or anything like that it has to draw from a bank account so that's the downside of using that because it draws straight from a bank account but if you have a fuel account and you know that everything's going to come out of that one fuel account it may be worthwhile to use it so just know there's some drawbacks to that and when you set up the account you have to give them your social security number it's a credit kind of thing so understand that that's a factor as well so on the open roads app just for example where I am now, the closest to me is a racetrack. It's listed at 379. I can get it for 362. So that's that's a cool feature, uh, and that's here. Again, the next thing we like to use to find the cheapest gas is Gas Buddy. So 
Okay, they have an app as well, and I'm going to show you what it looks like online first. But on the website here, I go to my current location. I can do my setting, or I can type it in what type of fuel I use, cash or credit. I can pick a different uh, specific brand. And let's just use this. Uh, I'll see that, that racetrack, for example, that we just talked about. And it shows me that. Now, while you're using the app version of uh, Gas Pro or Gas Buddy, and we're driving down the highway, I'm driving and Blair sitting in the passenger seat typically doing gas research. So she uses Gas Buddy to find the cheapest gas or open roads to find the cheapest gas. And typically, if it's an open roads, it's a love truck stop or Flying J or one of those big gas stations you can always get into with a trailer, so it's not that big a deal. But some of these smaller ones, it often is. So uh, we will get directions on Google Earth or, or Apple Maps and transition that to a satellite view. And we will zoom in on... So zooming in on, on the gas station here, I'm able to see kind of what the parking lot looks like, where I might pull into. I can see in this particular picture there happens to be an 18-wheeler going by. So I can see, kind of judging by size, that I would be able to fit into that uh, space right there and and get gas comfortably. So doing a map study, I see. Now looking at that same thing on on the app here, Gas Buddy, it's the same kind of kind of setup here. I've already got diesel programmed into here, so I get fine gas. And I can see the list, and up at the top it tells you the lowest is 375, the highest is 429. And I really like to look at the map, because if I know I'm traveling along a highway, I'm able to see along that route where I might stop and get gas, or where we're in a gas desert, uh, where no gas is located. So, And the final thing is uh, Walmart Plus. So you can shop in a Walmart with the app, and as you walk out of self-checkout, you scan the code on the self-checkout apparatus there and you can check out and keep on walking. Really handy. You can also get deliveries done to you for free if it's over a certain amount. Now Walmart Plus costs some amount of money per month. I forget what the what the subscription is, but you also get 10 cents off a gallon at a, at a Walmart. And you can also use that to shop at a Sam's Club uh, gas pump as well. So those are some other technology apps that we use and other things that we use, particularly just related to gas. And that all happened. I forgot about some of those things until we were coming up here today. So Walmart Plus is a really handy thing for shopping. And it, they can deliver right to the park sometimes, wherever you might be. Um, it's handy for walking, you know, cutting the line, so to speak, getting in and out quickly, checking out. So you can walk through the store, scan all the items in your cart, check out really fast. You don't have to scan them at the scanner. Uh, Sam's Club does that too. So if you have a Sam's Club membership and you're walking through a Sam's Club, you can scan scan and go basically. You scan everything with your phone, check out and walk out the door. You don't even have to go through a register. Uh, Costco has self-checkout, but they don't have the scan and go feature, which I think is really, really fantastic. So uh, those are just a few other things that we use uh, as we travel around. And if I think of anything else, I'll let you know. All right, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's gonna be some giveaways. I have this electric kettle. So Stoke Voltaics, uh, they sent me this thing to do a review on. I did a review. It's on Amazon. Uh, you can find my review of, of me cooking with this thing. I've used it once to heat up water and cook some popcorn in and washed it and put it back in the box. You can win this simply by going to the Contact Us link on our website. Hit the button. Type in your name and email address. Please make sure you spell your email right. I get a lot of emails and email address in there is incorrect. And I can't, I can't reply to you. So uh, all you got to do is just put your name, send an email. We will randomly pick a winner at the end of 24 hours. So the video is going to come out on a Sunday morning at 8. 24 hours later on a Monday morning at 8, I'll stop receiving emails. And then we will randomly pick one out of a hat. And I will send you an email back and asking for your mailing address and all those things like that. Um, if that person doesn't write back within 24 hours, I'll randomly draw another one and we'll keep going like that until we have a winner. And then I will mail this to you uh, for your use. We have some really cool stuff to give away over the next few weeks, so please stay tuned. A couple partners that we have always, uh, you get 10% off snap pads by using 1-3 Adventures, uh, 13 Adventures. If you don't have snap pads on your trailer yet, 
please get some. They're fantastic. I love them. 1790 Knife and Tool Company. I carry my knife with me everywhere. We got a super special branded 13 Adventures knife. It was a limited edition run, so it ended on March 1st, but you can still get 10% off anything on the website using 13-Alpha-10, 13-A-10, 13-Adventures-10, and you get 10% off any, any purchase on the website using that code, and it's always free shipping. So no matter what type of knife you need, they have a myriad of knives out there, and you can get them personally, uh, personally done. Laser annealing, annealing is what it's called, and they can print anything on your knife, but it's a really cool option, and... Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of these knives. I carry this thing with me everywhere I go. As always, thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of your day. If you have any questions or there's something I missed here, please feel free to reach out via comments down below and or contact us link on our website and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and happy adventures.